since then. Yeah. So, uh, obviously there was Smash Camp. Speaking of which, the, the Grand Finals run back here coming up, Kadoran and Espat. But, uh, yeah, it is going to be super interesting to see how these upcoming majors play out with... Again, the, the Slippy era has just changed so much with people being able to grind, like, as much as they want. It's, uh, it's allowed for so many up-and-comers to improve way faster than they used to. It used to be the only way... Like, with, with a game like Melee, you kind of need to play against high-level players to improve, right? And... Mm -hmm. For a lot of players, especially players in weaker regions and stuff, that was only when they went to majors. Like, right. that was the only time that they got an opportunity to play against high-level players. Now, almost anyone can do it at any time, and they have, like, unlimited resources with which to do so. It's it's wild to see. So I think we're going to see a lot of up-and-coming players uh, make a splash of Genesis for sure. Yeah, especially because we saw, like, all the, the net player grinders really making like the results count in the last couple weeks or the last few weeks. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be interesting. For sure. But I will say Espat is definitely one of those players that was like one of the hardest working even prior to like the pandemic or any oh, other yeah. the online stuff, right? No, He's absolutely. Got notes on notes. Mm -hmm. I've seen a sneak peek and it's like hundreds of pages, dude. Yeah. Thousands even. Wow. That's I'm a lot of pages. Probably, probably. <laughs> 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 All right. Love that edge guard from Esfat, the classic Marth killer into falling up air. Oop, Kadorin catches him slipping with the ledge refresh. And I think I think uh Salt got him once on the ledge refresh too, so Esfat definitely needs to be careful with those ledge refresh. I mean that's theoretically a good option when your opponent's coming down with invincibility, but if they're if they notice that you're going for it, then they can punish you unless you're literally, you know, frame perfect. Yeah. Wow, what a down air yeah. from Kadorn. Typically, it's not the easiest for Mark to be able to fall down like that, so mm -hmm. it's really tricky timing. Yeah. Okay. All right, smart from Kadorn, making sure he got the kill. Not going for... Looked like he might go for a down air somewhere in there, but not trying to force the issue too hard, just making sure he got the hits. But Esfat does answer back right away with the up air. Back to even. Oh! How did... Nothing come out of that exchange. <laughs> oh, no, that's so scary. Going slightly above the edge actually was... Yeah, it worked out for him. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but okay. Uh-oh. Edge guarding. Oh, and Kadorn actually kind of missed spaces his up B there, but... Dude, man, he's light. Ka Kadorin loves the light hit up airs. He, he's really good at using those. Oh, wow. Up B going directly into him and getting a good amount of damage off it. He's still above. Yeah. And it, I think he's out of jump. Oh, wow. wow. Yes. No. Managing to take the lead. That's a good point. Yeah, without the jump, like, really Mark's <laughs> fall is going to be pretty telegraphs. Or you can... Yeah, I mean, the, like... You can maybe try to do a next level counter, <laughs> but you know, that's obviously not the, the the ideal play to go for. So it's it's a rough spot for Marth when he doesn't have a jump. Yeah. And he's above Fox. <gasps> that's not how you wave shine. <laughs> okay. Oh man, this is despite the percent lead, this is an extremely scary spot for Fox against Marth. Oh, I love oh. the slide off from Esfet. But he's still in Kadoran's grasp. Yeah, this position Kadoran just does so well in the. Okay. Staying outside Ooh. the dash attack range, that was good from Espat. Yeah, that was an insane uh, smash DI and comps attack from Kadoran as well. Mistimes the jab. Oh, he still he lands. Okay. Oh, he's off stage. Oh, that's a. Oh, that was so nice from Espat. Just kind of representing multiple different types of edge guards there, and then. Gets Kadorn into a bad spot, has the ledge invincibility, just lets the shine rip. Yeah, it does like the light shield at first, so it feels like, okay, I can go to the edge, then he jumps, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, I gotta fade back a little bit, and then just like grabs the edge, does the, the drop down shine. That's yeah. it. Like you said, so many different options represented. Right. What can you even do? That's that's tough for, for a Marth recovering. But uh, great stuff from SFAC game one and that really important counter pick advantage against Marth, right? Because obviously we're going to see FD here. Typically we would expect to see a Marth win and uh, SFAC retains the counter pick advantage after that. Wow. Forward throw shine. Okay, tries to get a read there. Oh, 
Oh, oh wow, and Doran's still making this work for him. What's happening? Oh, the counter shine from Espat. That was so good. What even happened? It looked like Kadoran like did the down B and wanted to like fall off with it so you could get the forward air. I don't. I think he meant to stay on stage with the down B and then he just kind of tried to roll with the punches there. Yeah, that makes more sense because yeah. that seems like really tricky to mm -hmm. try to figure out that setup. But yeah, great stuff with the the very bottom of forward air can actually hit like a, a sweet spot side B attempt like that. So really nicely done from Aspa or from Kadoran rather. Mm -hmm. You know, some people counterpick this on oh. some people counterpick this stage <laughs> in this matchup. We have seen it, and we've seen some success with it. I won't say who. You know, I, I've seen SFAD do it before. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to discuss how that went. But we've also seen people do it with success. <laughs> oh. oh, barely. Yeah, that looked like it was going to hit. Okay. Oh, now these now light hits. Up. There's no platforms for SVAT to go to. Just building up so much damage. And I saw the uh, double jump come out there. Oh, wow. And uh, Kadorn with kind of another slight misplay on the edge guard, but SVAT not ready with a good angle there. He possibly oh. could have survived that. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Really smart from Kadorn, but does not have the invincibility from the ledge anymore. So that's why that uh, forward, or get up attack did not actually work. The counterplay for both oh. of them off stage has been so good, minus that yeah. last interaction. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, they're both doing some great stuff off stage, but they're also both making some serious flubs off yeah. stage as yeah. well. Yeah. So we like to see. Oh, huh. Okay, I guess he was expecting a shine or something, but uh, I mean that that air dodge was never gonna get back on stage. Yeah. Maybe he just meant to like air dodge like straight up. Yeah, slight kind of yeah. Maybe. Oh, this is big. Ooh, wow. wow. Just let's the down air rip. Kadoran taking that very important game on FD because you go down 2 0 there and it's incredibly hard to come back. Yeah. But he got the win he needed on the uh, supposed freebie counterpick. Obviously, not actually a freebie, but uh, he does take the FD game. And now I'm curious what we'll see from SVAT here. They go Dreamland yet? They did not, so yeah, that's probably the play for MSFAT. Because game one was Stadium, mm -hmm. so he can't go back there. Maybe Yoshi's? But I would, yeah. I would imagine Dreamland. Yoshi's makes a lot of sense. In current era, it feels like a lot of boxes are counterpicking to Yoshi's. But SFAT, counterpicking Falcon to FOD and counterpicking Marth to Dreamland. Some things don't change. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh, no. That's... Very unfortunate for SFAT, especially especially with some momentum getting started in his favor. That's that's a quick way to kill it. Yeah. Come on, Zach, bring this back. Loving the unbiased commentary from Vish. Hey, only when he SDs. <laughs> only when he SDs, sorry. It's all about the underdog, Ooh. right? In this particular game. Oh, okay. That was actually an insane mid Jordan from SFAT. I think he might have been dead otherwise. Okay. Oh, wow, he got the crouch cancel, but didn't opt to go for down smash you would usually expect there. Ooh. Oh, no punish after the jab. Yeah, that's where you would typically expect the up smash, and Kadoran closes up that stock pretty quickly, so the momentum is starting to mount in Kadoran's favor. We'll see if SFAT can somehow bring it back. Okay. okay. Good start. There you go. Big. This is potentially really big. Oh, I oh, love that shine there. Yeah. Really understanding how much hit stun he has after that forward air. I love that SFAT just walked past him to, to not be in the corner anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait, I'm not supposed to be here in the corner, right? I guess I'll just go over here. Just casually do it, nonchalant. <laughs> oh. Oh, the cross up, but Kadoran doesn't fall uh, fall for it. Yeah, no, just he's the... uh, he's ready for that. Does not try to go for anything. Staying in shield, mm -hmm. respecting the ledge dash distance too. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, feels like he could have upbeat and survived, but yeah, if that did get off the ledge after the side B. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that shine could have killed. Yeah, and Kadoran maintaining that one stock lead. 
This is huge for both players. Obviously, the pivotal game three to see who has the counter pick advantage to close the set. That was such a good up tilt from Espat to continue that combo. Let's get some of these cross ups on Doran's shield. Oh. Can you get the edge guard? Oh, that's oh. so good. Oh, and the. the I guess I can't swear, but the uh, F U shine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's just unstaling his other moves. That's, that's true. <laughs> yes. It's, it's optimal. Okay. I love that shine. It's oh. Shine. Yeah. Okay. Good DI from S Fat. And insane angle. He's still got a chance. Wow, the raw up smash. Oh, okay. he doesn't get the grab. That wow, up the air. falling up air on side B, of all things. The chillin' classic. <laughs> oh. Man, let's it rip and a good time to do so as Kadoran takes a two to one lead. Now with FD out of the way, this counter pick advantage isn't as severe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the fact that SFAT just lost the counter pick advantage is not, does not bode too terribly for him as long as he can do a, a solid uh, performance this game four. But you have to wonder now if he goes back to Dreamland or not. Ooh, what would you counter pick? Um, I would probably go Yoshi's at this point, especially if I just went Dreamland and it didn't work out. And uh, I think in this day and age, it's the the uh, whole Marth sucking on Dreamland uh, yeah. thing is is not nearly as true as it used to be. Yeah, I think Marth players have learned how to adapt to Dreamland, despite the high platforms, despite a lot of room running room for other characters. I think Mars are getting a lot better at uh, Dreamland. It's almost like how Falcons got eventually good at Fountain, right? Yeah. They get counterpicked there so much that they're comfortable on the stage after a while. Yeah, space is good. Mm -hmm. space. Oh, but wow. kind of makes sense that S Fat sticks to his guns, right? Like he's a very, uh, very calculated player. Very, uh, very much likes to stick to his ideas about the game. Mm -hmm. And if he has a certain counterpick, even if he loses there. He's very likely to, to go back if he thinks it's the best best stage for the job. Absolutely. Tried and true <laughs> for after so many years of playing. But so far, Kadoran's really just putting on the pain in his first stuff. Yeah. Now, like I said, Kadoran does not look like he dislikes Dreamland whatsoever at this point. Yeah, and also like Esfad just waiting a beat on the top platform, Kadoran not really like going up there, mm -hmm. playing the lead pretty well. Oh, oh that's big! But... Wow, the Shine actually sending him back on stage. That was so fortunate for Kadoran, and obviously quite the opposite for Esfad. Mm -hmm. Miss Ledge Dash doesn't get punished. That's okay. He's, oh, he has his jump. Actually. Yeah, he still has his jump, so I'm gonna take a little more, but as fat. Great way to clean up the edge guard on Marth, and we're back to three stocks apiece. Man, that's light shield edge guard into ledge dash turnaround of smash. Mm -hmm. That's wild, man. Yeah, super clean from as fat, and that's one of those things you know he's specifically grinded a ton of times. Actually Ooh. saw him like just grinding that specifically at main stage. You're just on a corner oh, yeah? just to set up doing that specific thing over and over again. I think that's one of the most respectable things about S Fat as, as a player, right? Is that he he has very like specific ideas about the game and he really grinds those specific things. Like he he maybe doesn't get as creative as other players, but that's just his style of play, you know? He wants to make sure that he has his certain responses to certain situations figured out. Yeah. And a stock of, th that stock is a great example of what you're talking about, right? Just slowly but surely building up this percent and then getting these flowchart type edge guards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, um, that yeah, just might be it. That's it for sure. Jeez. So Kadoran on the verge of making winner's finals with a 3-1. We'll see if SFAT can pull some kind of comeback here. Don't go off stage versus Kadoran. <laughs> Don't let him throw you off stage. It's, it's not a good spot to be. No. Oh, okay. Great uh, fastball to ledge from Kadoran. Oh, that's a great time to use the dash attack. He's been not really threatening that kind of distance in neutral. Oh, oh that might be it. No, oh, and <laughs> SFAT! <laughs> He knew it was coming. He knew it was, we all knew what was coming. Man, uh, great stuff from Kadoran. Kadoran with a, for him, a bit of an underperformance at Cody's tournament this weekend where he got fifth. So I think he's hungry for a win this weekend. Yeah. But uh, or this tourney, but he's gonna have to get through Plup to do it. Yeah. As we have our winners finals set, Kadoran and Plup.
Ooh. And uh, I don't believe Kadoran has beaten Plup before. I could be mistaken about that. But not that I can recall. So it's going to be tough. I mean, <laughs> again, Plup is looking insane today. Has not dropped a game as far as I know. And uh, even even the matches against good players have looked pretty dominant in yeah. Plup's favor, right? Yeah. So we will see how it goes. Let's take a... Uh... Kadora's first big win was on Plup. Oh. It says, how did... Uh, Blur's here. Oh, Blur. What's up, Blur? How did Blur, Blur come at the perfect time when Kadora just won that match? The Marth senses. The Marth senses The Marth senses coming in hot. Thanks, Blur. Oh, Blur. Helping Appreciate out the commentators. You. What a friend. What a good guy. Good guy, Blur. Um, let's take a look at uh, what's going on in Losers. We got... Gio and Eddie Mexico. Null and Eddie Mexico 1-1 one one, um, for a spot in top 8. And Smash Daddy mm -hmm. also ran it back to top 8. He'll, he'll be playing the winner of Null and Eddie Mexico. On the other side, we got Salt and Lucky. Ooh. That is... Oh, I want to watch that too. Yeah, that should be a, a really interesting set. Yeah, I feel like Lucky might be... I guess I, I, I don't know how the Salt and Lucky sets go, but I mm -hmm. feel like Lucky might be able... Would be able to like really play to that kind of style of Falcon really well, right? Because he he plays against Johnny a lot, and just over yeah. over the course of time, he's played against Johnny a lot. And Johnny's definitely one of the more aggressive, fast Falcons. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, Salt is very different in terms of like timing and move usage and whatnot, but he's familiar with that kind of speed of Falcon, yeah. right? So I that that would be fun to watch. I think it's gonna be uh, a a good set, but yeah, I would I would imagine that Lucky's prepared for that kind of yeah. uh, Falcon, speedy Falcon, and uh, just a really fast player himself. Exactly. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we will see. Dang, Kadoran also in chat. Play your match, Kadoran. I don't even think he has a match. <laughs> no, he has winners finals, but I don't know if that. I mean, it's okay. happening right now. It has apparently. Uh, Thank you, Kadoran. Apparently been stated that winners finals oh, salt is going beat, down. Salt beat Lucky the last time they played. Oh, okay. Mm, that'll be salt, fun to watch, man. Salt with the uh, win over Bobby Big Balls to make top eight, by the way. So maybe Bobby should have focused on grand finals instead of worrying about his West Coast bracket. <laughs> just say it. Just say it. Um, I think you're. I think he's working too hard. <laughs> he's, he's. You know what? It's working too hard. But we do have winners finals coming up. Um, this is this is gonna be tough uh, for Kadoran for sure with how well Plub seems to be playing. But yeah. Kadoran has seemingly gotten a lot better at the Sheik matchup, right? Like he's always been really good versus Spaces. Yeah. But it seems like he's shored up his anti Sheik tech a lot in recent times. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of have to, right? But just the matchups in general that Marth has to, to deal with <coughs> is definitely one of the ones mm -hmm. that can be tricky. So. Oh, absolutely, yeah. This this used to be considered heavily in Sheik's favor back in the day. You know, this used to be like 60-40 uh, Sheik's favor. But I know it's... a certain legendary Sheik beating a certain legendary Marth in a certain big tournament. I don't know if you're referring to Chillin' Dude 2 0 ing M2K at Evo 2007 <laughs> to make top eight, but if you are, that's a good point. That's a great point. I'm glad I could keep it as vague as I could, and your mind will just go right to that. I kept it as vague as possible. It took me a second. I was like, oh, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Winners, finals, Kadoran and Plup. All right. Oh wow, the obviously intentional forward smash. Okay. Yeah, Marth Marth really likes to keep Sheik above him and get those juggles. But it's a uh, can be tough to do, obviously. Wow, what a needle edge guard from Club. The one thing I like from Kadoran on the being edge guarded side was doing that like quick side B to like kinda anticipate Club coming at him. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh no! Barely misses that down air, and that could prove to be rough. But no, it looks like he keeps it going. We'll see if he can finish it this time. Oh man! Oh, no. 
Wow, what a ledge dash from Pluff, too. He got a lot of distance there. Be able to get that shield grab. Everyone has good ledge dashes. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Pluff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Pluff. It's Pluff. It's not like this is like an up, up and coming player. Wow. wow. Everyone's tech skill is so good yeah. now. <laughs> Like, I was just thinking about the tournament in general, but that was not the best time for me to say that. I will give you that. Wow, who's this Pluff oh, guy? This Pluff guy is really, just really technical and fast on the edge. Oh, man. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay, wow, great timing on the getup, and Kadoran taking the lead. Oh, wow, smart from Pluff. That was... Actually, an insanely good air dodge from Kadoran, but Plup ready for it. Yeah, this Plup guy just really is turning it on. I'm really, I, I hope to see more of him. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> I hope we get to see more of Plup. Oh my goodness. I hope we could see his, his performances at majors and stuff. Like, yeah. I could easily see him getting top 16 at least. Oh, easily. Oh wow. <laughs> the great coverage with the down smash. Down smash tippers are always really impressive because of how small the range is, right? Like, right. it's got to be like near pixel perfect for it to be a tipper. Mm -hmm. Okay, just staying on the ledge. I like it. Man, the low profile of Sheik's crouch is something you really got to respect. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a fairly low to the ground neutral air that just got kind of, didn't even hit Plump. Yeah. Because of Sheik's crouch. Hmm. Okay. Falling down through the platform at the back. That's that side B I was talking about. It's really solid because Plup loves to do like the turnaround wave dash back off of ledge to do an aerial or something. Right, right. And then just throwing out that side B is uh, kind of tricky. Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh, it looked like back air was yeah, going to come I, out, right? I'm really surprised that there wasn't a back air there, but it, uh, it That's a good somehow feint. worked out for Plup, yeah. It's a really good feint. Everyone thought he was oh going to back air. Is Puff going to make this comeback right now? Oh, he messes up his input. Still fine, though, potentially. Oh, man. This would be a huge win for Puff. The up and cover. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Kadoran always on point with those yeah. uh, platform tippers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's really not much. There's not too many places she could go right. from that position, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you. Are you gonna go to the platform or you're gonna go to the ledge and kinda had to go to the platform and yeah. uh yeah, Kadoran obviously ready for it. So taking game one and uh again, Kadoran definitely looking to uh you know, kind of avenge his fifth place at IBW's tournament and winning his own team's event Ooh. would be a great way to do it. What? We will see. We will see. He's up 1-0. That is actually the first game that Plup has lost the whole tournament, Vish. What? Or even ever. <laughs> In his entire <laughs> life. Time. What? Kadoran did it? the first time he's ever lost a game of Melee. Unbelievable. Kadoran so impressive from Kadoran. All right. Dreamland once again. Obviously, we saw from that SFAT set that Kadoran is pretty comfortable on Dreamland, but I think it's even harder against Sheik when you're Marth on this stage. Jab reset on Marth at yeah. like a 30%-ish range. Um, I feel like you get popped up a lot. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be just because it's such an uncommon option against Marth that Kadoran wasn't ready to DI up, you know? Right. That's probably the case. Hmm. Interesting choice from Plup that worked out nicely. Ooh, almost had that fade back bear. Okay. Ooh. Okay, and solid first stock from Plup. Yeah, just control the entire time. Mm -hmm. Man, even just the way that Plup fell down from the top platform to the bottom is just really tricky, the timing of the fastball. Yeah, just the movement in general, always so clean from Plup. Anticipating that you can't really get too much off of that up tilt, so puts the shield up, knowing that Kadora's gonna down air there. Right. Man. Okay, that was really fortunate for Kadoran that that traded. Probably would have been dead otherwise. Okay. Oh! oh! <laughs> if that was on purpose, that was such a baller move. <laughs> I, and you know what? If you do the chain low, it covers shield drop. I don't know, man. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. Sick down here from Kadoran to finally take a stock here. These guys work cut out for him. Oh, that was a really nice pivot grab. If something works, it's the right thing. True. Technically speaking. <laughs> oh. Wow, what oh. a grab. As he was shield dropping, he grabbed him. That was kind of crazy. Uh-oh. Uh hey, hey. Wow. 
<laughs> what? Really testing the sweet spots from Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. That definitely looked like uh, Plup tried to shield, but got a, a light, or tried to grab, rather, but got a light shield. Mm -hmm. Oh, just barely off on the timing of that, because Plup still had, like, the invincibility. Mm -hmm. oh, wow! Make sure to get the reverse fair. Beautifully done from Plup. And also, delaying it like that, I feel like, will throw off any kind of tech timing that mm -hmm. Ghidorah would be trying to do. Yeah. You know? For sure. Well done from Plup, who's working on a three stock here all of a sudden. Yeah, man, a lot of that just has to, you have to know how much time you have as Sheik on Mark when they do that up B, mm -hmm. and then do it right at the last, last second. It's crazy. Right. Wow. Yeah, just three stock, straight up. Great way to answer after yeah. losing game one from Plup. And uh, have to imagine we're seeing that FD pick here. I mean, obviously, it's not quite as good as against Spacey's, but we did mention earlier how much Marth likes having Sheik above him for those juggles, mm -hmm. and the lack of platform escape options makes it a pretty solid stage for the Marth-Sheik matchup as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to figure that's where we're going for game three. There it is. Go. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, this, <laughs> this particular situation, as you pointed out, yeah. is just... Plup will kind of have to go to the ledge in mm -hmm. a lot of these positions because you want to get some kind of mobility off of going out like that. Yeah. Ooh, wow. What? That, it almost felt like that was, uh, that was definitely going to work, and then yeah, what is it? Plup managed to get out. I don't know if there was a, there was a delay from Kadoran at all, but it might have just been not a true combo at that percent. Mm. Also, I think Plup DI'd, like, up and away a little bit, so like it was just like an awkward place for the down air to hit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh wow, love the falling needles there to avoid the forward smash. Smart from Plup, getting a ton of damage here. Yeah, and on the flip side, Sheik also gets a lot when <laughs> when Marth is in the air like that. Yeah, so. very true. Okay. Oh, it just goes, just dashes all the way through. Yeah. Okay. All right, that might be the stock. That was a really good setup from Club. Oh, Kadoran with these air dodge recoveries has really been uh, getting some mileage. Should be stock though. Yeah, there it is. Four stocks to two. And since game one ended, this has been the Plup show so far here. Yeah, and all those spot dodges too. Like, <laughs> what is? Okay. Uh, like the crouch cancel to lead to something. And man, just imagine how different this game would look if Pluck or Kadoran had gotten that uh, Ken combo in the first stock. Yeah, all the momentum. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh, falling down with an up air. Yeah, that's with Mar stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Marth? Okay. Finally taking a stock. Let's see if Kadoran. I mean, Marth can not necessarily just straight up zero to death sheet, but he can basically, you know, juggle her enough to, to get that type of scenario, so Kadoran can find one of those, and he's in good shape, but he's dead again! And the, the edge guarding from Fluff has been so good. Just between, like, kind of jumping out there and then jumping back and doing a down tilt to catch the not so spotted up B from Kadoran. Mm -hmm. Amidst all the other mix-ups Fluff's been doing. Look at that! He charged needles for a second in the air so it looked like he was gonna throw it, then he right. falls down and throws it? <laughs> Who's ready for all these mix-ups? Yeah, no, Plup doing an insane job at uh, keeping Kadoran guessing. Okay, gets out of there just in time. Wow, and the forward tilts from Plup. Just clinical, another three stock, back-to-back -back three stocks. Kadoran down two games to one and uh, is backs against the wall here. I wonder if he's gonna try a different stage. I would imagine he would stick to FD, but it's hard to trust your counter pick when you just got three stocked there, right? Like, yeah. We'll see what uh, Kadoran decides here, but uh, Plup definitely looking pretty dominant since that game one ended. Yeah. It, it felt like Plup was able to make more of the situations when Kadoran was above him than vice versa. Mm -hmm. So that could also just be the fact that Plup just got so many more neutral openings. Right. Okay. Unfortunate that he didn't get the uh, up throw up till. I think that combos at like certain DIs and certain percents, like right there it comboed. 
but uh, not always against Sheik. Yeah, and it looks like it's a hard follow-up post up tilt. Like yeah. you kind of have to read their jump or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely some some reading involved there. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Kadorn gets to ledge, but it's it's kind of tough for Marth to get off ledge against Sheik. Yeah. There's not great options there. Oh wow. The the wave dash up shield poke with the close forward smash. I like that a lot. Oh. oh. Kadorn tried that once earlier against uh, S Fat, I think, and it also didn't pay off. It's it's really nice when it works and it's very tricky, but yeah, it, it kind of hurts when it doesn't. Yeah, because then you're just like off stage using neutral B. Yeah, it's a bad spot to be if it if it misses. Okay. Quick turn around. Neutral the other way. Oh man, that was a good jump from Kadoran to completely avoid the dash attack. And okay, great timing from Kadoran on that edge hog. Mm -hmm. The nice part about FD also is that, you know, no platform, so there's less spots that she can go post a B. Yeah. Yeah, so that's definitely simplifying the edge guarding from uh, Kadoran's end. For sure. That's one of the biggest advantages of this stage as well, along with the uh, juggling oh, ability that Marth has. Just walks slowly and does that up tilt? That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> a little accidental Bobby Scar reference. Um, okay. I don't know how to phrase that a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Made his way forward at a slow, slow pace. pace. He's meandering. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say walk in a different way. Uh, but a slow jog. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, man. That hurts from Kadoran's end. He needs to finish this stock ASAP to have any chance here. Ooh, oh, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. Because even at that position, right, it looks like you're too close for like a tipper F smash. Mm -hmm. So you take in place there, really not anticipating the, the down smash facing. Right, right. Oh, I love that. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Still in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kadoran has not been able to follow up too much on any of these juggle situations, which obviously it's harder than it looks, but that is kind of one of the big advantages for Marth on this stage. So the fact that he hasn't been able to get too much from that is uh, part of why this is looking kind of rough for him right now. Okay. Oh, oh man. Tries to do the Nair so that it kind of like planks with the Sheik's up B. Right, right. And then you can go on stage and continue the, the edge guarding. Mm -hmm. But if you miss it, then you just get burned. Yeah. Okay, good timing on that edge hog. Not over yet. Kadorn still got a chance here, but he's gonna need something quick. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Ah oh, man. Just a really rough spot when you get grabbed by Sheik. Definitely way better than the first FD game, though. Oh yeah, I mean to go from three stock to one stock, that's improvement for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, still got to give some props to Kadorn for at least taking a game off plup, since no one else in this tournament's been able to do that so far. And obviously, Kadoran's still alive in Losers Finals, but Plup, once again, just looking on point today, looking on point in general lately, and he makes his way to Grand Finals. Did we expect anything less from Plup? I mean, he's one of the hottest up-and-comers out. <laughs> <laughs> really making a name for himself right now at TMT 70. <laughs> wow. He's, um, he's going places. <coughs> for sure. That Sheik is going places. For sure. It's funny, because I remember when people actually said that about Plup when he was a Samus main in, like, 2013. Yeah. And I wasn't convinced until I fought his Samus in bracket, and he 2 owed me, and I was like, all right, this kid's actually legit. <laughs> Isn't and that, then, like, a quote from the documentary? <laughs> like, maybe. I mean, I probably, Plup, yeah, I probably said someone. that about someone else. <laughs> probably he's, he's, probably about Mango or something. He's getting really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh... He obviously really stepped up when he added other characters to his repertoire because Samus kind of sucks sometimes. Yeah. Just being honest, Samus is a uh, little bit limited in some ways, despite being a Samus main, I'll admit it. But when Plup added the Sheik and then the Fox as well to his repertoire, yeah, he's looked pretty insane ever since.